Thank you, Chris, and good afternoon to all of you. I uh, appreciate this opportunity. It's a topic that is a, is I, we're also going to see a quick piece in just a few minutes, but it's a topic that's also very important to me. I've got three girls, uh, a, I have to remember, a 14-year-old, a soon-to-be 12-year-old, and an eight-year-old. Uh, we live over the mountain in Five Points. My three girls go to a school called Restoration Academy in Fairfield, and um, it's an issue that touches every age group, especially middle, this is an issue, I should say vaping and electronic cigarette usage, but also combustible traditional cigarette usage that touches every single age group, especially middle and high school students. Uh, we're going to do three, really three things today, and before I start, if you didn't get handouts, there's some brochures up front just about the e-cigarette issue. There's also a handout I put together with some local data on it, and then on the back side is a very important piece with FDA proposed requirements. It's an article that came out last week that would give convenience store operators and other forms of retail establishments 90 days to amend and change their e-cigarette sales and usage laws. So I also want to point out, if I can, Barbara Newman and her team from Jefferson County Department of Health is with us today, and they are the tobacco control arm of Jefferson County Department of Health and do a phenomenal job here in this community. Why am I involved in this? Three years ago, the Alabama Department of Public Health and the Jefferson County Department of Public Health uh, awarded organizations throughout the state funding to tackle the retail surveying education opportunities in the community and then school surveying, student surveying about their usage of tobacco and about tobacco sales. Uh, it was through a process that was funded by the CDC, still is funded by the CDC, and Dr. Susan Wiley and myself were the recipients of that grant. Myself from the administrative side, Dr. Susan Wiley, who is a hospitalist with Children's Hospital from the medical side. We have had that grant. We're now in the fourth year at Children's of Alabama, and we're very proud of the work that we've done with it. We have had uh, policy changes, for instance, in the city of Mountain Brook, where they have now put in place a comprehensive cigarette uh, tobacco control policy, including e-cigarettes. Uh, we're working in other communities. I will commend you and Homewood. You've got a very strong policy and have for many years, Barbara, isn't that? Yeah, Michelle worked on that one. Yeah, Michelle worked on that one. Okay, helped us. good. We, were, we all partnered together a few Fantastic. years ago with the help. So our Over the Mountain communities, Mountain Brook, Homewood, uh, Vestavia, and certainly Birmingham, as I believe Birmingham being the largest municipality in the state that is comprehensive. Uh, have all followed suit on that. So I wanted to make sure you knew those pieces of materials are over there. We'll do three things as I mentioned. I want to show you a very brief two-minute clip of an interview that Dr. Susan Wally did on vaping specifically. Secondly, I'm going to take you through a very uh, brief PowerPoint on traditional combustible cigarettes and the origin of tobacco. This is the same presentation, and I think it's important to do that we take students through because we want them to understand that e-cigarettes do contain nicotine and that they are a source of tobacco. The original uh, marketing attempt by e-cigarette makers was to, and Scott Gottlieb and others have referred to this through the FDA, the original marketing ploy was to use e-cigarettes as a way to wean adult smokers off traditional combustible cigarettes and uh, at some point to quit smoking. What we have seen in the article that is referenced on the back of your handout sheet uh, references is that it has really been a gateway for teenagers. Um, we've got samples, you've seen them all. If you're uh, familiar, you've got jewel, you may have seen them all. You've got things that all look like my thumb drive over here, Jewel, and this is a Juno, uh, but where we have progressed from are these, which is a blue, which was the early iterations of e-cigarettes, to something that looks like a Jewel, that is basically a thumb drive that has got removable 
cartridges that you place in. So we'll talk more about those and they'll be up here for you to see. Let me first start though, and then we'll do Q&A as our third thing. Let me start briefly with Susan's quick interview that I think it's important for you get to get to know her and see her and then we'll jump in. I do. I think as a pediatrician, there's two major issues with electronic cigarettes or vaping devices. One is that these are not safe products. And the second one is that they contain nicotine, which is a tobacco product. And I think most youth and adults don't realize that these contain tobacco and all of the dangers that we know related with tobacco. And to make things more complicated, the manufacturers are making them appealing to children by putting flavors in them, right? That's exactly right. So e-cigarette companies are using some of the same techniques that tobacco companies did decades ago by making uh, these liquids that are very appealing to youth with candy flavors and dessert flavors. And that's very concerning to pediatricians and public health advocates. And how big of a problem is this today? It is a big problem. So starting in 2014, more youth are using electronic cigarettes and vaping devices than any other tobacco product. And in 2015, we know that 5% of middle school students are current users of electronic cigarettes. Middle school. Middle school students mm -hmm. and 16% of high school students are current electronic cigarette users. So it's so important for us as parents to be educated. Another issue is poison. Uh, there are just a huge number of calls going into poison control. In fact, between 2012 and 2015, um, number of calls went up by, listen to this number, 1,492%. That's not a typo. That's right, and it's just very scary because these are completely preventable. We've already had one child death from uh, ingesting their mother's uh, electronic cigarette liquid, having a seizure, and couldn't be resuscitated. Oh my goodness, so this really is serious stuff, and it's not fully re regulated quite yet by the FDA. All the more reason why we as parents have to be educated about this. That's right, we want parents to be educated, we want pediatricians to be educated, and we want kids to be educated Absolutely. about the dangers. All right, Dr. Susan Wally, thank you so much for sharing with us, and if you'd like to learn more information about this, and other health and safety topics, just go to our website, childrensal.org. Okay, so that is Dr. Wiley, who is my partner in this and really the expert. Uh, you see four logos on our PowerPoint here. Dr. Susan Wiley is also literally the author of the e-cigarette paper by the American Academy of Pediatrics. It came out a couple of years ago, the national paper on it. So really is viewed nationally uh, as the expert in vaping and e-cigarette usage. You notice two things in that quick video. The data was from 2015 that said 5% of middle schoolers and 16% of high schoolers. On the back of my handout, about three quarters of the way down, you've got 2018 data that has come out of all tobacco usage, now 29% among middle school students and 38% uh, grew 38% among teens and 29% among middle school students. Um, E-cigarette use rose 78% among teens and 48% among middle school students in 2018. So that number is rapidly, rapidly rising uh, as we see from 2015 to 2018. You're all familiar with our hospital. I, I always do our shameless plug. We're Children's of Alabama. We are uh, the only freestanding pediatric institution in the state of Alabama. We're a hospital that has been in place since 20, since 1911 and uh, really takes on not only the medical side of caring for children throughout the state and country uh, and really around the world, but also the public education side, something that we feel very strongly about. Um, we are a hospital that believes in doing our best at keeping children out of our hospital. Uh, we have a philosophy of right doctor, right place, right time. We want your child to receive the right care in the home community at the time that they need it the most. 
We want them also to receive preventive education, parents and children and guardians alike, that will enable them to grow up healthy, happy, and strong as they go. So this is our uh, Benjamin Russell Hospital for Children opened in 2012, something that we're very, very proud of. It really changed the skyline, I think, when you look at from Vulcan or coming down 65 heading north as to what we are. So we want to do three things. And we'll take about 30 minutes to do it and then leave time for Q&A and I can certainly stick around later. Discuss the health effects, review the ways that tobacco companies are marketing and advertising the use to youth, and then discuss new tobacco products and their risks. Again, we're going to start out just with a very quick primer on what is a traditional, e traditional cigarette, what is traditional nicotine and a tobacco product, because it's imperative to understand that to combat the knowledge, to combat really the statement, if you will, when your kids come back and say, but it's not a cigarette. This isn't nicotine. This isn't like a traditional cigarette. Um, the same models, the same uh, substances are included. Uh, over the next 30 minutes, we'll talk the truth about tobacco. We will have a few, I took out some of the more graphic ones for you, but when we do this presentation to children, we want them to realize that there are significant health effects that go into the use of tobacco. Uh, and then information if you want to learn how to quit, and we do have quit now uh, cards on the table, and I have brochures also that we can provide from the 1-800-QUIT-NOW line uh, that the state has. So what is tobacco? Tobacco, and you see it on the screen, it is a plant, contains uh, approximately 4,000 chemicals, including nicotine, and uh, leaves are processed for consumption. So what you've got basically, this is our uh, flow chart, if you will, uh, from the drying process to the shredding process to a traditional combustible cigarette, which is also in this same format from farm to drying, uh, manipulated into an e-liquid, which is what you see sold in vape shops, which is what you saw Dr. Wally mention, uh, comes in and you saw the various flavors on her video, Death by Chocolate, Skittles, uh, there are many, let's see, we've got coffee here, we've got Red Bull, we've got cherry, apple, mint, and chocolate. So it comes in literally hundred, any flavor you can think of, including walking into vape shops and saying that you want to mix flavors, uh, you can do. So it is all combined, all facilitated, all made through that same process that a combustible, combustible cigarette is made of. Um, based on your age, uh, for the average smoker, smoking decreases the number of years in your life by 13 years for males and 14 years for females. Uh, I didn't bring it in, but when we do this presentation for youth, I've got an oversized cigarette that is about this long that has these same graphics on it. And they always get a kick out of that because you talk about the fact that uh, there are more than 7,000 chemicals in tobacco smoke, 70%, 70 of them are known to cause cancer. But the more interesting aspect of it is when you look at what those chemicals are also contained in. Uh, batteries poison, then, uh, let's see, what are some, paint, methane is found in sewer gas, uh, you've got industrial solvents, candle wax, rocket fuel, barbecue lighter, and lighter fluid, formaldehyde being some of them. So when you do that and you talk to youth, uh, you normally get the ick factor, the gross factor. Uh, there is one that is, yes, poison. Uh, so commonly rat poison, things like that, are, that are found in combustible cigarettes. Um, risk from smoking, again, I'm really probably preaching to the crowd on many of this, but you've got uh, damage to every single part of the body, from head and neck down to bladder, cervix, hip, uh, reduced fertility, hardening of the arteries, uh, gum infections, blindness, stroke, the list goes on. So it is an important, uh, obviously issue to talk about that it's not just lung cancer uh, that you frequently think of when you think about tobacco usage and the health effects of it, but it is really affecting the entire body as you go. Um, smoking increases risk two to four times for stroke, two to four times for heart attacks, uh, 
20% uh, for emphysema and COPD. Certainly not a set of healthy looking lungs, if you will. We also, when we do this with uh, youth, we carry a set of lungs, one healthy, one unhealthy. That also shows them the very real health effects of it. 90% of all lung cancers are due to smoking. And then head and neck cancer, 5 to 25 fold for uh, those that are smokers versus those that are non smokers. Uh, there are, in 2014, the Surgeon General's report that came out 13 types of cancer, which we've discussed. One in three U.S. cancer deaths are, cancer, are tobacco related, and nine out of 10 lung cancers are caused by smoking. So you see the very real effects of it. We always use this slide also for teens when we talk to them. Uh, again, just to show that as you are looking at dating, as you're looking at trying to be pretty and all those things that I talk to my girls about not being important right now, uh, you break out more. You have bad breath and yellow teeth. You catch more cold. You use more medications. You have worse trouble sleeping. And you produce twice as much slum as spit or spit as teens who don't. So the the outside health effects are as real as the inside health effects and that's what we try to tell you that if you don't think you're going to ever get lung cancer think about the fact that you're worried about breaking out and this could increase that. So there are some things uh, that we do talk about that are very important but may catch their attention a little bit more than some of the larger health issues that are out there. U.S. deaths to smoking, 578,000 yearly. You see how those break out. Uh, on the side graphic over here, you've got your uh, other category, which is very important because it has the various respiratory infections and uh, other areas that are important. Secondhand smoke and even thirdhand smoke are very important, too, to talk about. Um, obviously, secondhand smoke, when we look at what has been released in research, you see all of these areas from ear infections to sudden infant death syndrome to pneumonia and asthma, asthma being the hospital's number one uh, diagnosis that we have. Um, that is not just obviously caused by <coughs> secondhand smoke. There are many environmental and physical factors that come into play with asthma, but uh, asthma is exacerbated by tobacco usage. And um, we know that and see that on a daily and even hourly basis. Uh, tobacco smoke exposure in youth, 40% of children have measurable blood levels of secondhand smoke. Uh, children, parents who smoke are more likely, and 9 out of 10 smokers start before the age of 18. That was the first side. I just wanted to give you a real quick rundown of traditional combustible cigarettes and what nicotine is because, again, in order to understand as we'll now move to talk about e-cigarettes and marketing and vaping, uh, you've got to understand how this trend is, has moved to get us up to this 21st century tobacco phenomenon that is e-cigarettes and e-cigarette vaping usage. Uh, the tobacco companies Obviously, as I said when I started out, uh, and the impetus for this, the marketing genius of it was that e-cigarettes and vaping would wean adult smokers off combustible cigarettes. What we've seen is the twofold. First of all, it is a gateway into teen usage for traditional cigarettes and for nicotine usage. Uh, we've also seen, and Dr. Wiley talks quite a bit about this, that uh, the weaning off for adult smokers is not necessarily is not necessarily occurring. What you end up doing is using both. So you vape and you use a traditional combustible cigarette at the same time. And so you really are not seeing those effects. There are two quotes that always stick out, and many of you have probably seen these and heard about these. R.J. Reynolds in February of 1984 Younger adult smokers are the only source of replacement smokers. If younger adults turn away from smoking, the industry must decline. The base of our business is the high school student. That was in 1978. That was obviously with the tobacco cases that came out. Uh, however, uh, you could argue that that base is still being pushed and marketed to as we go. 
this is the stat that really, when I got into this three years ago, stunned me, that we're spending tobacco companies a million dollars an hour in advertising. And we'll look at some of that advertising in a minute, but $24 million a day, seven days a week, 365 days, to market tobacco-related products. This is how they do it. This is, these are some local pictures, some that we've pulled off, some that are statewide. But what you see, and all of you are familiar with this, oh, let me, I'm actually going to retract that statement because I wasn't familiar with this when I started, before I started doing this. When I walked into a convenience store, because my mind was not trained to find the tobacco marketing and promotional materials in a store, I wasn't looking for this. So I glossed over it for whatever reason. It wasn't something that was, was going inside my brain, at least as a, from a, what am I, let's see, Barbara, help me out. Subliminal messaging was, was hitting me, but the actual effects of it were not. But what you see is you walk in and next time you go into a convenience store, take a look, uh, you've got tobacco marketing in all aspects of every single convenience store throughout the store, largely made to make it look refreshing, refreshing and cheap. So next time you go in, you get a bottle of water or a soft drink or fruit juice or anything else, look and see where the placement is. It's normally over something that is made to look refreshing and cheap, made to be kid-friendly and kid-centric. What do your kids want when they go into a convenience store? They want ice cream. Next time you go to the ice cream, uh, container in your local convenience store, see where that marketing for advertise, marketing and advertising for tobacco and cigarettes is. It's normally, I know, in the one in my neighborhood, uh, right above the ice cream display. So you've got Marlboro focused right there. And then product placement that is just normal. This is a sundry store, uh, snacks and sundries. Look at the window. It is covered with everything from Camel to Marlboro to Snooze to Natural American Spirit. Um, that this is just a normal part of life and a normal part of your everyday purchasing opportunities that you've got in your community. Uh, all three of those things are certainly not true. And, uh, are targeted toward the community and largely, as we saw in that second picture, targeted toward a youthful population. In 2018, 2014, 16.8% or 40 million adults were U.S. smokers, or adults were smokers in the U.S. Uh, this, these stats are 2007 through 2008, so they are a little old. It is from BRFIS, which is the uh, Behavioral Risk Assessment uh, survey that is done among youth, but you see here the national median 18.4, Alabama's current smoking among adults was 22.1. 29% of 18 to 24 year olds uh, said that they were current smokers, 23.3% 25 to 44 year olds. 25% uh, male, 19% female, and less than a high school degree, 38% versus more than a high school degree or a high school degree, 16 and 24 percent, respectively. Uh, the Hispanic, African American, and Caucasian populations you see at the bottom, 22, 21, and 15 percent as you go up that chart. So not a lot of variance between the, the, uh, the, the demographics that we see there. Tobacco use among high school students, this is the 2011 uh, youth risk behavioral assessment. Uh, you see cigarette, cigars, smokeless, and all tobacco. We are still above the national average when it comes to tobacco usage among high school students. So that was the second aspect, the marketing. Now let's really finish up and talk about the reason that I think we're all here, which is vaping and e-cigarettes. So what is an e-cigarette? The traditional form, again, that you're all familiar with seeing would be a blue that looks like a cigarette. This is what you would see basically here, although the technology in a blue and the technology in a jewel are the same. What it's got is a, jewels do not, this does, an LED light that is on the tip of the cigarette 
or the e-cigarette that lights up when the smoker draws on the cigarette. It does have a battery. Uh, in a Juul, it is uh, rechargeable. Um, a sensor detects when the smoker takes a drag. A microprocessor controls heat and light. The heater vaporizes nicotine, which again is found in a Juul in a very small capsule that uh, you can manipulate. We won't even begin to talk about how you manipulate this and put uh, marijuana extract in it, which is something that I'm sure the Jefferson County Health Department can speak to or we can speak to or go online and you can read ad nauseum about it. And then a cartridge that holds this right here, the nicotine dissolved in propylene glycol, which is, um, how many of you heard, by the way, that this is maybe your child or another child, it's just water vapor, right? Uh, it's not just water vapor. There are, as we talked about, the same chemicals that are found in combustible uh, in this propylene glycol and in the nicotine and in the e-cigarette vaping model period. All of that comes from these, in a jewel, you buy, uh, you buy the packages. I got some in my hand and this smells, this is some sort of a fruit um, that you can either liquid mix yourself in a mod in a, what is known as a tank. I don't think we have a picture of a mod, but, um, and I did not see a mod in your package. But, long story short, uh, there are older brands that look like a handheld device that have a tank that you fill up with liquid and you can mix your own. Same technology. We've just moved from these large handheld devices, again, down to the most prevalent tool in the industry right now, which is a jewel. So this is over, Barbara, help me, five years, four years that we uh -huh. moved from it's tanks been, and mods. Yeah. May not have been, been that long. I mean, it's changing, changing so, so rapidly. Rapidly, yeah. rapidly. I had one that had the tank, but it kept leaking. It and keeps, so I yeah. had it in a separate bag. And anyway, you could smell it like in my office. It was pineapple flavor. So that's, even in a Ziploc bag, it was still so strong. You still see, and don't worry about the numbers on this slide uh, per se, but you still see the formaldehyde, the uh, acrolein, the toluene, the, the uh, acetylene. I always get this one, acetylide, acetylhyde, uh, but conventional cigarettes versus electronic cigarettes, you still have the same chemicals that are found in traditional that you would find in, a, in, a, in an electronic cigarette or vaping device. And again, I know this goes just without saying to many of you, vaping a vape device and an electronic cigarette device are one and the same. So vaping and electronic cigarette usage are the same thing, just different terminologies for how you talk about it. The same toxic compound, compounds found in cigarettes are found in e-cigarettes. The solution, and Dr. Wiley talked about this on her video, uh, is a liquid form. You can buy it at vape shops. You can buy it uh, currently, at least for the next 90 days. And as you see on that back side, uh, that the FDA is really closing that one ramp for youth is they narrow the off-ramp, if you will, as Dr. Gottlieb has talked about, for tobacco use among adult smokers. But tobacco companies, e the e-cigarette companies, have 90 days to comply with the uh, guidelines that have just come out. But you can still buy currently uh, outside of vape shops. You can buy the liquids. Uh, you can buy them in vape shops. You'll continue to only, I think, the regulations will be buy them in vape shops. But that still doesn't decrease the risk that you have in your home. And if you have an e-cigarette liquid in your home, as you see here in December 14, uh, we did have an 18-month-old who ingested nicotine in an e-cigarette solution uh, while the mother was changing the television channel. C's never regained consciousness was the first child in the U.S. to pass away. Um, our numbers of calls have gone up. You heard the 1,452% to poison control centers. 
uh, nationwide. We have the Poison Control Center for the state of Alabama at Children's of Alabama, and uh, we continue to get call after call on uh, potential poisonings and uh, near occurrences with e-cigarette liquids that are found in the home. So it is an issue uh, that is largely not thought about, but when you have small, end of, small youngsters, infants uh, in the household that have their hands in everything, uh, if they have an older brother or sister or a parent that has this, this liquid, uh, the chances are that they could get into it. We always promote this, uh, the quit now line, and we'll finish up with this, and then I do want to take questions. 1-800-QUIT-NOW, um, 784-8669, a fantastic resource for this state. Uh, it's free in all aspects. There are nicotine patches, and we've got cards up front that you can get from it. Um, many more employers are going to a tobacco-free policy, and we're seeing that. I know at Children's, we do not hire uh, if your tobacco test comes back positive. Um, so more and more employers are looking at that as we go. The three takeaway points, cigarettes and tobacco products kill adults and children, don't start and the quit now on.